Mr. Rubini, thank you so much for speaking to us. Pleasure. I know you, you have been Mr. Bo Doom for years now. Now you're saying that actually extra QE is pointless and that also the Fed is running out of tools on how to attack the economy. What's coming up next? Well, I pointed out that uh, monetary policy is not going to be effective from here on because banks are sitting already on $1 trillion of excess reserves. They're not lending it out because there is constraint both in terms of the supply and the demand of credit. And if you do more QE and give them more excess reserves, why would they lend the second trillion when not lending the first trillion? And even more QE is not going to have much of an effect on long-term rates. They are already very low to begin with. It might have a short-term effect announcement on the stock market, but not more than an announcement effect. The point is that the Fed can deal with liquidity problems, but the problem of the economy are not just of liquidity, they are of solvency, of credit. Households being bankrupt, financial institutions being in trouble, corporates, now even governments, and monetary policy cannot deal with credit and solvency questions. Now we have the U.S. jobs data today. I know you've said in the past that the second quarter is going to be much worse than the first quarter. At best, 1% growth for the U.S. At worst, 0% growth. Will it determine what we have from the U.S. jobs data? Which way you go? Yes, I know. I expected that today the job creation is going to be very, very mediocre, barely any positive growth of jobs in uh, the private sector. And all the data suggests that actually the second half of the year is going to be worse. And all the tailwinds that were sustaining growth in the first half become headwinds. And even the first half, second quarter was estimated originally at 2.4, revised to 1.6. Now, based on the new data from construction, the revision is going to be to 1.2. So we start from 1.2, and you know, the second half is going to be worse because the tailwinds become headwinds. You had the fiscal stimulus becomes a drag, the inventory adjustment goes away, the base effects, the census, and all the tax policy that stole growth and demand from the future. Cash for clunkers, investment tax credit, first time on buyer tax credit. All those things were temporary, and therefore the second half is going to be worse. So if you start from 1.2 in Q2 and the second half is worse, we'll have growth below 1% in the second half of the year. And that's a stall speed for the U.S. economy where potential growth is closer to 3%. So it's going to feel like a recession, even if technically we are not yet in a recession. Has this already been priced in the markets? Because, uh, you know, the cash flow clunkers, the weak data in terms of the U.S. and the housing market has already filtered through, but we're seeing so much volatility on the markets. Where are we going to see a little bit of stabilization? I don't think it's been priced by the market. First, the consensus forecast for the United States is still of growth of 2.5% into the second half of the year. I see economic growth well below 1%, therefore condition on being right. That's not being priced by the market. And therefore, I think the markets are still adjusting to the fact that economic growth is going to be slower, but they're not pricing in the risk that is rising, in my view, 40% probability of a double deep recession, and even just the risk that even without a double deep recession, growth is going to be so anemic, 1% or below, below 3% potential, it's going to feel like a recession. You know, with growth at stalled speed, then everything looks worse. There is no job creation, home prices are falling, the budget deficit is larger, losses the banks have on their loans and securities are larger, so it's going to feel like a recession. But you say QE is pointless, so it's going to feel like a recession. I mean, how do we get out of this mess? We just have to live it through in the next couple of years. And does it also mean that actually in our world today, it'll be post-crisis, it'll be much easier to fall into recessions, but also to get out of them? Yes, I believe that actually we're going to have several years of anemic subpar below trend economic growth, what folks call it a new normal, because there has to be a process of deleveraging that implies saving more, consuming and spending less, and reducing this debt ratio of the household sector, of the financial system, of the corporate sector, of the government, and of countries that have large debts and current account deficits. So we cannot avoid this deleveraging is necessary. We have to accept low economic growth. What we can try to prevent maybe is a double deep recession, but they we're going to have a rapid recovery of growth to potential. I think at this point in advanced economies, U.S., Europe, Japan, is mission impossible. What does it mean for gold? Are we going to see investors being much more risk averse? Are we going to touch 1,500, even 2,000? No, I believe that the gold is going to trade range around current levels. There are two extreme events that lead to spike in gold prices. One is inflation, but we have no inflation in advanced economies. If anything, there is a risk of deflation with an output gap rising and with a slack in labor markets. And the other extreme event in which gold prices go up is when there is a risk of a global financial meltdown. And that tail risk has been also reduced because we backstopped the financial system. Of course, if there was a double deep recession and if there's going to be an increase in global risk aversion, some assets are going to be preferred and gold will be one of them. But in that situation, I would say that things like the dollar, like the yen, like the Swiss franc have more upside risk in a situation of rising global risk aversion than gold because they're much more liquid than the gold market is. In really 10 seconds, are we 
we going to see anemic growth coupled with actually a large correction on the equity markets? Uh, well, on the equity market, it depends. With a delay expected, actually, equity markets in my scenario could be correct in downside. Nouriel, thank you so much.